So this video is gonna be a little bit more tame just because of the fact that your boy lost his voice last night when we was up in the club dropping that red eyes black dragon <laughs> and all that fun stuff. All jokes aside, had a great time for Cinco de Mayo. Hope you had a great Cinco de Mayo. Let's dive on into the top 10 cards that you need to be side decking against purely. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with my very lost voice most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1100 ladder and hopefully hit 1200 subscribers before the end of 2023. That would make me hard, ladies and gentlemen. So, hope you have a fantastic day. Let's talk about the top 10 cards you need to be side decking for purely because this deck is busted AF. Still holding to the fact depending on what happens with the regional circuit and why CS is coming up here. I think it's going to be a good deck. I don't think it's going to be tier one, but I think you should still at least be prepared for it. So these are in no particular order. At number 10, I have board breakers in the form of Kaijus, Lava Golems, Sphere Mode, Santa Claus especially, etc. Now, why is it that a lot of people are going towards Santa Claus instead of, say, like a Kaiju in most decks? This is because that Santa Claus only has 1,200 attack, and if need be, it has 2,500 defense, and it gets summoned out in defense to the opponent's field. Hence, because of its effect, it says bringing out in defense compared to something like a Kaiju. The majority of the Purely's are pretty small monsters. They don't have high attack unless they have delicious memory, multiple delicious memories, preferably as Xyz materials. Then they're gaining 300 attack and defense for each Xyz material. And obviously with multiple delicious memory, that stacks. So because of the fact that this is an Xyz based deck, you know what that means? It can revolve around double A Zeus. So typically you'll go like summon at purely beauty. Beauty's effect can change the uh, battle position of a monster whenever you activate a purely quick play spell and use this effect to attach, then it can change the position. So you can change the Santa Claus to attack mode, use the 1600 attack beauty to run over the Santa Claus attach any other materials that you want to to the beauty before that point or after that then you drop out the downer you drop out the zeus and you've got a zeus that you could probably use on this like six or seven fucking times like it's really degenerate and disgusting how many times you can get a zeus effect off in this deck it's really toxic if i'm being honest with you so if you are able to use things like that, especially if you are a purely player, then you're going to get rewarded for that. Um, you know, if you want to play a going second deck like rank eight axis, then Kaijus are going to be your best bet. If you want to play dinosaurs, because remember, come wild survivors uh, next month, we get the new dinosaur support. You can play things like Doggeron because that's a dinosaur Kaiju. I wouldn't really recommend sphere mode. Uh, because that does require three monsters and purely, I would say majority of the time we'll have maybe two monsters. So if you want to go down the route of Lava Golem, you can, or like I said, play something like Doggeron, which is a dinosaur kaiju that you can search in dinosaurs in the dinosaur deck. So you do have a lot of options uh, available to you, which is fantastic. Now I will say that I have currently been testing playing Vanity's Fiend in purely because I saw a build that was side decking two copies. That can shut that whole portion of your strategy down. So just Keep that in mind as you are moving forward with this. You want to also potentially play things like Rageki if need be, um, or even evenly matched to eliminate, uh, you know, problematic things like that. It just, I feel like Kaijus and all that's going to be your best bet. So next up, we have Xyz Encore. Xyz Encore cards and effects can't be responded to it. And the way that it's ruled is that you can activate an Xyz Encore on a purely noir that is unaffected by activated effects, hence why you're also playing the kaijus and things like that to obviously eliminate the noir. Uh, but the way the Xyz Encore is ruled is that the way that the card works, the opponent has to remove the Xyz materials. Then because of the fact that at that point of resolving the effect, the noir can now be affected by the opponent's activated effects, you can then send it back into the extra deck off of the Xyz Encore. It's really, really busted. I haven't seen a lot of people playing it and I'm not sure why, but it's a very good pick. Sorry about that jump cut, you guys. I had to go fix something outside my door. Um, so for the next one here, uh, at number eight, I have continuous effects. And by continuous effects, I mean things like Skill Drain and Phantom Knight's Fog Blade. For those of you who uh, aren't aware, X Purely Noir specifically states it's unaffected by the opponent's activated effects. What this means is that anything that activates, Raigeki, Lightning Storm, Forbidden Droplet, Forbidden Chalice, whatever, it does not work on it. Continuous effects are different. Things like Skill Drain are continuous effects. They are a floodgate that impose an effect on the field. Therefore, it plays around Nuar's 
unaffected by activated effect ruling. So if you have multiple skill drains set, if you're able to bait out, you know, enough noir bounces on each activation where to where the third point can stick, assuming that a balance doesn't put it to fucking one, then you do have that as an option. Will the purely player most likely have enough materials to balance the skill drain? Most likely, or if they're an idiot, <laughs> which you'd be surprised at how many times I've seen a purely player get skill drain and they don't try to stop it. And then they realize, oh, I guess I'm screwed now. Yeah, skill drain, I feel, is still going to be a decent option moving forward. Phantom Knight's Fogblade just being another type of continuous effect. Anything that imposes a continuous effect is going to be good in that regard against purely. So just keep that in mind as you're moving forward here. Uh, at number seven, again, with the floodgates, uh, specifically things like TC Boo, anti-spell especially, things like that. TC Boo, you know, they summon out purely Lily and activate the effect of search. Sure, chain TC Boo. They can't make an exceed because they already have a fairy type monster on the field and all of the purely exceeds are fairies and they have to use purely and purely Lily's effect in order to make those exceeds. So you lock them out with skill drain or you even lock them out with TC Boo. They're going to have a really hard time because they don't have a way to out TC Boo normally like in the main deck. Even if they're playing the agent link monster that they contribute to pop the skill drain, they can't make that because that's a fairy and they already have purely Lily face up on the field. So TC Boo is fantastic in this matchup as well as anti-spell because yeah, they're all quick play spells. Um, but if you go first and you activate that anti-spell, they are forced to activate their quick play spells as soon as you do that in their draw phase to where, you know, they can't just play them willy nilly or when they do search off of like my friend purely or something, well, they wouldn't because of anti-spell or if they excavate one off of the regular purely, they're not going to be able to play it. They're going to have to set it and wait till next turn. Slowing down purely is the name of the game when going against this deck. Next up here, uh, number six, I have Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird is fucking disgusting against this deck, uh, especially if the opponent's a dumbass and they don't activate their purely quick play spells in the draw phase. Uh, then once they go into standby or main phase and they start doing searches off of purely or purely Lily or my friend purely, um, then you just draw them and then their turn, unless they have a maybe an extender like Delicious Memory to go into the plump to attach materials, they're going to be screwed. Droll and Lockbird is amazing going into this format. It hurts so many decks. It kind of hurts Math Mech from what I've noticed depending on their opening hand setup and what the board state is. It kills the shit out of Cash Tira because they really don't have that many extenders as it is. Uh, it can kind of hurt Sprite a bit depending on what kind of negates they have up on the table. So Droll is just going to be fantastic moving forward in this format. At number five, I have D Shifter. Um, purely relies on the graveyard. They need their spells in the grave to reattach with Plump or to even send back monsters off of purely leap after it's been in the grave so being able to lock them out of the graveyard is fantastic along with things like that too speaking of droll i have seen some people trying deck lockdown um that's interesting it is a continuous spell that the purely player can potentially take with like pretty memory but it's worth noting here i wanted to give that as an honorable mention next up at number four i have d barrier it's an exceeds based deck you activate d barrier and call exceed and the purely player sits there with their little evs in their hand and they're just like i guess i fucking lose now because uh, they they literally can't do much of else like what are you gonna do you're gonna make the agent link monster like okay cool i'm just gonna beat you next turn like d barrier just shits on this deck it's really funny actually at number three i have cosmic cyclone a lot of times uh people will activate their purely quick play spells and the opponent will chain cosmic cyclone because then that purely quick play doesn't go to the grave and as long as you can deny them that one that can really help you especially with something like delicious memory denying them being able to go into plump to get back those spell cards from their grave is disgusting and so being able to pay that 1000 knock it on out of the park that once it's banished they have no way to get it back so it, it's a really fantastic option of a card Next up here, at number two, I have Herald of the Abyss. Herald of the Abyss is very interesting. Uh, so you pay 1500 call the monster type and attributes. Like if they have a Noir up, you call Dark Fairy, they have to send their Noir back. And it's similar to Exceeds Encore to where the opponent has to do the action in a way. It's not the best way of explaining it, but basically the opponent has to manually choose. And in this case, if their only option is the Noir, which nine times out of 10 it will be, they have to put that Noir back they lose all those quick plays, you know, like it, it's really good. It's, it's a fantastic out. It's not seeing a lot of play, but the fact too, that even if they had like another Noir up, they're locked out of using that Noir's effects for the turn is insane. It's, it's so good. 
Uh, and then finally, at number one here is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Now, why Ghost Ogre specifically? Ghost Ogre is great because whenever the opponent tries to use the regular Purely or Purely Lily's effect, which is a hard once per turn, whereas the regular Purely is not, to take a quick play spell from Grave or Hand, respectively, and make the uh, Purely exceed, if you use Ghost Ogre, then the monster is going to pop and they're not going to be able to get that exceed. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to put this out there because I've seen people do it and I laugh every time because I'm like, okay, cool, I'm just going to try again. You don't want to Ghost Ogre the Purely or the Purely Lily when they're just attempting to use the effect to Exivate or Search, respectively, because Purely specifically is not once per turn on either of its effects to make the exceed or to excavate, whereas Purely Lily is a hard once per turn for each. So once Purely Lily tries to use effect to copy a quick play in the grave, Ghost Ogre them. They just lost that exceed. Same goes for Purely. They have to have another Purely that they can get to, i.e. another quick play in their hand and a discard fodder to get out that purely and then still have a quick play in their hand where they can summon something decent. That's a lot of card commitment just to be able to go into a second purely and try and make some kind of exceed. And then they're not even guaranteed to win the ball game at that point. Ghost Ogre is so key. It's it's so good too. Like just in general, like you can stop cash tier on birth. You can stop, like I said, the purelies. If they do go into plump and they try and use the effect, you can just ghost ogre them and then the whole thing dies. And then they lose that copy of plump. It's a very versatile card. I really do enjoy it, this format. Um, overall, I think that these are great ways to uh, stop purely going forward. I've seen some people say you need to play Nibiru. I don't like Nibiru because, I mean, the purely player majority of the time can set their board up in four summons. And especially, too, if they have straight purely street up and my friend purely, then they don't give a fuck about Nibiru. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been nibiru playing purely, and I have both the straight purely street field spell and my friend purely up and i just get all my resources back and rebuild my board because the quick plays aren't once per turn so i'm like thank you like i have nothing to fear now so guys let me know what you think about all this and more down in the comments below thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video